Hi guys, welcome to this short video on um, hedges, my hedges that I've made. Um, it's a never mind the bill hooks video because um, these hedges first appeared in Never Mind the Bill Hooks. It's a game I, I, I play or really enjoy, uh, based on War of the Roses by Andy Callan. And um, on the Facebook page of Never Mind the Bill Hooks, which I suggest you check out because it's a, it's a great page, the, the people are very friendly um and there's a lot of resources on there and um, obviously you can get into the game as well somebody actually asked you know how did i make them and i've received a few pms from people as well asking the same question so i figured okay i'll make a short video on on how to make them uh, there, there is a bit of debate about the hedges at the time in medieval times um i i happen to be of the camp that believes that there were uh, more hedges than people think and there are some people that think there, there are far fewer than there is so in my games i tend to use a moderate amount of hedging um, and i tend to use it in a, in a kind of a sensible way for for the period so they're not like you know boundary uh, hedges for fields and stuff they'll line tracks and roads um, there'll be plenty of gaps um, and they'll they'll be like a, a like a maybe a, a great hedge here and there uh, for instance at poitiers there was a great hedge at Broad's Heath there was a great hedge so they certainly existed at the time I mean, they go right back to Roman times, and in fact, in 1200, there was a, a royal proclamation allowing barons and, and lords to to um, put a boundaries around their lands that they owned, and um, you know, hedgerows and planting of hedgerows, and the cultivation by uh, cutting down forests and leaving uh, a line of trees and stuff was encouraged. So, uh, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that there was hedges. But again, it's entirely up to yourselves how many you want to use. Um, you don't have to use hedges, you can make uh, bushes and shrubberies uh, like this. So this could be like a hawthorn bush or just a thick uh, outcroppy bush area, which would be great for instance, you know, it's a great little obstacle, um, could cause disarray to a unit trying to move through it. So there's just an irregular shape there. So uh, without further ado, I'm not going to show you six different ways how to make hedges out of six different materials i'm going to show you how i make hedges um and uh, i think it's the i think it's the best way i think they're the most realistic looking hedges and uh, hopefully you can get something from it and um, enjoy the video um, and as a side note you can use these hedges for other periods obviously um, and you can scale them up or scale them down however you see fit so how did i make them let's uh, let, let me explain how moving on this is the basic substrata for my hedgerows it's uh, vulcanized um it's, well, it's called vulcanized horsehair but it's not actually horsehair it's a uh, coconut fiber i think uh and it's vulcanized so it's got like a rubberish kind of um uh, layer to it it's been sprayed so it feels a bit like rubbery and stuff uh i mean it, this is this is a couple of quid a sheet an a4 sheet i'll put some links to some various sites where you can get this um, and it really is amazing stuff. It's great for doing clump bushes so do, and stuff like that. You get a base. I've got. I use uh, black, black plastic card basically because it's it's already black, so the edges and stuff is easier to to, to paint. Cut it into a shape you want. Um, I've gone for one foot shape, uh, one foot lengths and six inch lengths. Uh, just cut it roughly um, by about an inch and an inch and a quarter wide or whatever. Just just big enough so it's wider than a man. On the base um, and that's your base there and then we do with this stuff is you cut a piece off just cut it along a nice square now I remember when I first started wargaming you used to get a lot of hedges like this and just covered in green you know and they're all like square and stuff which in one way they're not too bad for modern farming modern hedge, hedges can look like that but it's not really very realistic looking so what do we do with this? Basically, we start to pull it apart. So you want to loosen it all up, get in there, get all the fibres opened up. From the, from the let sorry, I meant to say, leave the you've got two flat edges, okay? There's the top edge and the bottom edge, and stuff in between is quite loose. Take an edge that you're going to stick down. So we're going to stick this edge down. So basically, you rip the top off this one. Make sure you hold it with these fingers because you'll just rip the whole thing open. Once you've ripped the top off that. The inside's all nice and sort of soft. Yeah, so I'm going to be sticking that on there. So how do I want this to look? All right, I want, I want, I want a biggish bit here and a gap, right? So what I'm going to do is basically take out this middle part. Be quite rough with it because it's going to look natural when you're finished. Okay. That's looking better. So take my scissors, all the squared edges bit, just round them off. 
get a little rounded look to it. Okay, so you get you end up with something looking a little bit like that. And then some of the stuff you've taken off, grab a bit of that, like this, roll it into a ball. So you've got a nice little ball, tumbleweed if you do Wild West, which I do do Wild West as well. We're doing a series of videos on um, Gunfighter's Ball, which is a game I started playing. So I'm going to be adding this piece here. So I'll look at that, how does that look for me? Yeah, that, that's something, I, I quite like the look of that, it's a good looking shape. So, hot glue gun, straight down, got plenty on, basically going to be holding that in place, stick it down, push it, let it go off, won't take too long, burn your finger with it while you do it as well, adds a bit of authenticity, a bit of hot glue on there, get your ball, that on there as well and then let that dry for a second the great thing about hot glue guns is they take literally seconds to dry don't they so that's basically drying you can see there that's the feel of it that's fine because you're gonna seal it all up later once once this hot glue goes off it won't move so much uh, give it a little trim again that's my dog coming upstairs, I think. I think the stair gate's locked up. You don't want to make this too neat. You want to leave it a little bit ragged because all the bushes are ragged, aren't they? So I'm going to take a little piece out of here. We'll get a little bit of the ground in there. Makes it look a little bit more. More realistic. Right, that's ideal. You can keep all these little loose bits, because all you literally do with this stuff, because it's uh, vulcanized or rubberized, just literally roll it all up. It does actually go into a nice little neat ball, which you can keep for for later hedges so that's that okay guys so what i tend to do now is add pva to the bottom of the base uh, chuck it all in there and i'm gonna put sand dip it in sand so the base is all covered um to be honest i'll be actually honest with you i made a mistake i should have done this first <laughs> but obviously uh i'd already used that we're gonna start the heads down so I was thinking about making a video and I was thinking about the video rather than the technique I normally use. So, yeah, if you do do that, just chuck the, do it afterwards, it doesn't matter. It's just easier if you've got a lot of the plastics to do like sort of 10 bases. I mean, I made 22 feet of this stuff and um, I've based all the, I did all the, um, all the uh, sand on the bases first and it just made it a lot easier then. But anyway, never mind, I did this one the wrong way around. Chuck a little bit in there. A little bit of ground showing between the between the hedge and that. So I'll just dip that in my sand. And what I use for that is an old washing up bowl full of uh, sand, which I've harvested. Chuck it in, cover it all over. And if you can see that, just chuck it in all over like that. Give it a second to just soak up. I tend to leave it in there for a, a few seconds. It allows the um, sand to take the moisture out of the PVA and then it sets the PVA off a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, that's it so far. So get it out and tap it. Okay, pop that away and put that sand away later. So you end up with this. 
you've got to let this go off now let this cure for uh, an hour or so uh, once that's cured uh, I'll just show you that you see the natural look that you've actually you've actually got there yeah so all, all this stuff don't worry about that at all that all, that all adds to it, it all adds to it because if you look at the bottom of a hedge um, it's not just a, a bit of ground and then a load of green bushes on top you've got like all the root system and the gnarly bits of tree and stuff coming up as you can see here yeah see all that there and that just gives it that wild look next time you're out and about have a look at the edge and you see the bottom of it really is quite a, a, a gnarly old place a ratty old place so yeah so i'll let that go off for an hour and when i come back we'll discuss uh, the next stage okay guys so that's dried that's ready to go it's been curing for over an hour which is fine uh, for the next stage which is spraying it so i'm going to use this uh, army painter uh, the one i tend to use is um, uh, leather brown uh, I just find it gives it a nice dark sort of ruddy sort of colour. Um, basically what I do now is I'll go into the garden, I will do that, you know, I will spray stuff in a, a well ventilated area, um, as you know, and I will spray the entire thing in this colour. And the reason I do that is because number one, it paints the bottom for me without me trying to get a brush in there and, and you know paint all this sort of sandy area. Number two, it darkens the uh, the natural bush inside because what I find if I just put the flock straight on top of this um, vulcanized uh, coconut fiber is that this is too light underneath and it just looks a little bit you know it doesn't look quite as realistic whereas once you spray it in that color you get this you get this nice sort of uh, ready sort of shade in there like a, a ruddy brown shade in there which is a very sort of color that is inside bushes because obviously the wood inside bush is brown plus it's in shade so it does look darker but if it was this color it's kind of contrast too much so that's what i tend to do and to be honest with you it's easier it's far easier to spray it with this it takes two seconds the whole thing spray you let it dry and then you're ready to flock um, so i will go into the garden now spray this up and then i'll come back and then we'll, we'll continue the next stage okay so welcome back uh, this has now been sprayed as you can see so easy to do um and just it, it just saves take all the effort out of trying to paint these things all these little rough edges and stuff i leave i leave them exactly as they are don't try and remove any of that it all adds to the, the natural look of it yeah so this is what i use hobby tack now hobby tack is a, a strange adhesive it never goes off it always stays tacky don't use a decent brush with it use the brush that comes with it and the first set of flock I'm going to use is this one. It's dark green. Uh, it's dark green <coughs> coarse flock. I will put, I can't remember the name of the uh, the company uh, I got this from, but I will put all the details on the video as I make it. Okay, so I'll just chuck that in my trusty washing up bowl. Right, so get the hobby tack. I'll say this is... This has really been bashed, unfortunately. I've used it a lot. So there's, I'm right down to the last few bits. So basically, I'm gonna be adding this where I want to, for that flock to stick. Now, because it's the dark green, I want it down the bottom. So if you take a look at some of these bigger hedges I've got, if you look at it from this angle, and then from that angle, you see the, the light is uh, from the top down, yeah? So I'm gonna be going along the bottom edge. So, Stick it on like so. You've got to worry too much about being neat with it. Now while this is uh, white looking, it's not very sticky. Uh, by the way, if you've got rubber uh, gloves like the rubber gloves, wear them. Because honestly, this stuff gets everywhere. It's really, really tacky and it never ever goes off. So that's there, do the same on the other side. And the reason the bottle's on its side is because, like I say, it's almost empty. Use it all around there. And it, but that hobby tack is amazing for this type of stuff. Now it never goes off, so if you just used hobby tack, uh, the flock would keep falling off. So there's a way that you seal it at the end, which I'll show you. nicely done so as you can see 
they're the bits that I'm going to be putting the first layer of uh, flock on. So I'll give that a few seconds to just uh, get tacky. Um, say with hobby tack, wait until this starts to clear and then it becomes super tacky. Uh, you, you can do it when it is white, but it just doesn't sort of uh, stick quite as well. Look, uh, my gloves. That is what that stuff's like and it stays like that. Okay. So you can see now it's starting to just stick to my gloves a little bit. So now is the time to add the flock. So the first color I'm going to add, like I said, is um, the the darker flock. So this is the, the, the dark green flock and it's coarse. You can see the, the lumps all over it. Just pour it all over the bush, like so. Chuck it all over. And then what I tend to do is pat it a little bit. Just move that camera a little bit so you can see a bit easier. I think it's a little bit too messy. So, yeah, drop the flock on. I've got much just left actually. 22 feet of bush took a lot of, uh, a lot of flock. Pop it on like so. Okay. And then tap it. Tap it on the side of the, I tap it on the side of the bowl. Remove any of the loose stuff you don't want on there. And that's it, that's the first bit of flocking done. Moving on to the next one. So for the next one, I'm gonna be using a medium green, again coarse. Um, and wild green, yeah, medium green. So this is a, a much lighter green, but it's coarse again. So first things first. Hobby tack. And again, for this particular layer, I'll just be touching a little bit. So as you can see with this layer, I've just gone around the top edge a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of this medium green, which is also coarse, and this gives it a little bit of vibrancy, a little bit of uh, different color, a little bit of um, more greener color, lighter greener color. So this will start forming the outer edge of the bush now. And like I say, be, be generous, chuck it all over. It'll only stick where there's hobby tack. Um, but don't worry about sticking it anywhere else at this stage, just put it on. All over. And then tap that down again. You can see the bush starting to come together now, hopefully. Starting to grow. Okay, then you, you go for a different contrast again now. This is wild green, fine. Which again is a, a, a different colour, different shade of green. And uh, this is really good stuff. It really does look like wild green. Um, hobby tack once more. You see how messy this job is. And again, now I'm just going to lightly go around the edge here. Right on top of the bush now, look. All around there. So what I'm doing, I started off with the bottom one, then this one halfway up, and now I'm going right on top. Around the edge. You've got bits that are loose on it and, and all that. Don't worry about it, it all stays on because at the end we seal it. And when it's sealed, it doesn't come off. Uh, these are all sort of Railway building techniques, really. These the guys who build railways do this all the time. I'm not a railway builder myself, but they've got some great techniques. So there you go. So that's that. That's the next layer. And normally I'd let that dry for two or three minutes, but obviously for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to carry on. So this is fine wild green. I just drop that all over. Fine wild green. 
So that wild green is a really nice colour. And then the final colour I add is this stuff, and you can see this is very vibrant. And this is just going to go right on top of the bush uh, to give it like a highlight. It's literally like painting a figure, you know, you paint the figure dark on the bottom and then light on top. So you can see I'm just tapping the top there just to give it a little bit of a shine on top. And with this one, you don't put it all over. Like the others, you put all over the bush and then they find their own layers. With this one, you take a little bit and you just sprinkle it where you've done the, the glue. You don't want this to go everywhere. It's just on top. Shake it off and let that dry. Okay guys, we're gonna let that dry. Okay guys, welcome back. So the hedge is almost dry. You can see the little white bits are disappearing now. Um, you've got these little dark areas. Uh, yeah, looking good. So what I do now is I use scenic cement. I can't recommend this stuff, up, this stuff enough. Like I said, I don't get anything from this company or anything like that. Um, it's a, li a little bit expensive compared to using normal PVA, which you can use with water. Um, you can mix that up in a spray bottle and spray the whole thing and the PVA will work however you'll get like a tiny sheen to it um, this stuff is what you know the professionals use I mean this dries completely matte and seals everything so that nothing comes off I and mean, these are all you done using that and as you can see nothing falls off and they're gonna last a long time so after all that effort get yourself a bottle of this I can't remember how much it is it's about seven eight nine quid or whatever Get yourself a bottle of this. I sprayed up 22 feet of hedgerow with it and I've still got half a bottle left. So I don't muck around with PVA and stuff no more uh, for jobs like this. I use the proper stuff. This is what the, the railway boys use. Um, it's absolutely superb. So you get yourself a bottle of that. Don't worry about getting yourself a spray gun. You know, if you if you use this in the house or, or whatever, or even go to Lazarus and buy one of these for two quid, empty it out and you've got a great spray gun. Um, here's one I've got earlier. Break the top off, they're just the pop off tops. So, all you do is give it a shake, actually, give it a good shake. You can see on the bottom this white stuff that's that's the, that's the actual glue that you're going to be seeing it with. So, give it a really good shake until you see the stuff on the bottom starts to go away, as you can see there now. That's it, so that's gone. Yeah, clear. So Last time, so there we go. Right, so tip some of that in your bottle. You only need a little bit for this hedge, but obviously, you've got to get it to come up through the spray gun. Now, I would normally do this outside, but I'm gonna do it in here, clip that back on roughly in place. You never get these back where they actually came off, but uh, where is it? That's there. Okay, so that's back on. Make sure it's on spray, which it is. Um, I'm just going to get myself a bit of tissue. Okay, guys, so I've just put a little bit of tissue there because I've got some figures and stuff I'm painting. This stuff does cover a large area. It's absolutely brilliant. So just get your hedge and give it a good old spray. Soak it right up. And you can see underneath just how much is going on this thing. You know, you want to really soak it up. a good covering and none of this stuff is ever going to come off again so we're nice and tough on your war games table now this is going to take a good couple of hours to go off but when it does go off this hedge will be unmovable just like your uh, just like your Yorkist foot knights holding back the Lancastrian pretenders so I'll let that well, go guys there you go uh, it's dried, uh, there's a little bit left in the, in the middle there to dry yet, the, the, where it's white that does completely clear. But uh, look, it's tough now, it's not going to go nowhere, nothing's coming off it, you, you know, that's going to last on your on your gaming table for a long time. And I think you'll agree, it does look really, really effective. Um, you've now got a nice little gap to fight over. Um, you know, this is, this is, this is kind of scenery that really can set your battle apart from everyone else. 
you know, I mean, you know, do other bits in, and there's your scene holding back the Lancastrian pretenders. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll put a link in the description for where I got the, where the, uh, all the parts from. Like I say, I don't get anything from any of the companies involved in this. This is purely because people ask me how I made them. Um, check out the Facebook page, Never Mind the Bill Hooks, um, and, and have a go at the game. If you've never played Never Mind the Bill Hooks, check out some of the videos I've got coming up on playing the game uh, on Monday or three or four days' time from when this video is released. It'll be the first of the battles that we're doing. So check that out, see what you think. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you've got something from this video. Um, and if you if you enjoyed it or you, you've got any other thoughts, leave it in the comments below. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.